they're doing it just like the Zionists do. Just like the Zionists, when it's been when it's been proven uh, incontrovertibly that you lied about, for example, the beheaded babies or mass rapes, but you'll say it and you'll just keep repeating it anyway. You know, and that's what this is. The same same thing that these people do. The same thing, even after it's been debunked. I just had this, I just had someone uh, comment just a, a couple of days back. They haven't even been able to get a glass of water into Rafah. What? History. So you don't follow the news then. Like I've said before, so you don't actually care about whether or not you're saying anything factual. You know, and then pretending that you're outraged about the fact that they can't get a water, a glass of water into Rafah. But when you find out that that's not a fact, it doesn't, it doesn't please you. You're not relieved. Oh, alhamdulillah, they've actually been able to get thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of liters of water into Rafah. You know, hundreds of thousands of tons of, of relief and food that they've been able to get through. Alhamdulillah, that's not your response. That's not how you feel. Because you don't actually even care about what's true. The only thing that you're, you're not interested in whether or not they got water and relief into Gaza. You're not actually interested in Gaza. You don't care one way or another about Palestine. Your only concern is is tearing down the Muslims. That's actually the only thing that you care about. And alhamdulillah, it's always based on lies. Alhamdulillah, it's always based on lies. So you're, 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 you're actually uh, exposed as, as a liar and someone who doesn't care about the truth. And alhamdulillah, that means that all of the, these negative... Uh, malicious things that they say about the Muslims, about the Muslim governments, whether you like the Muslim governments or not, uh, even the, even all the way over to Indonesia, it means that all of these are lies. You have to lie in order to say something bad about the Muslims. But the ones that are spreading this propaganda in the Middle East are the Muslim Brotherhood back. Of course. I'm sorry, but of course it is. I I know. Of course it is. They're the same ones who are spreading it in English too. All of these are either Ikhwani or Ikhwani aligned. Because the only thing that they're concerned about is bringing down the governments. That's the only thing that they're actually concerned about. Like I said, they don't care one way or another about Gaza. They're disappointed when, when, the, when the Arab governments are doing good things for Gaza. And actually, you're not interested in them doing good. You don't want them to do good because then it makes it more difficult for you to have a legitimate grievance against them that you can, that you can try to use to stir people up uh, for uh, a revolt or a revolution. So you don't like it when they do well. You don't like it when they're doing good things. You don't like it when they're praiseworthy. Because all you're interested in is tearing them down. Because you want to sit in that seat. That's all it is. And, 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 and wallahi, I, I, I promise you that if you were, if any of these groups, like the Ikhwan, if any of these groups were able to tear down the governments and get in the seat, they'd be even worse than what they're claiming about, the, about those governments. Why does Qatar support the Muslim Brotherhood? Qatar, of course, is very small. It's a, it's a tiny country. Uh, they haven't been particularly uh, successful in... They've been very successful in, 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 in their own resilience as a country in not being, uh, like, for example, the, the very ill-advised boycott and, 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 and blockade against them by the Saudis and the Emiratis and so on, uh, Egypt. Um, but... They're, they're not particularly successful at power projection. And I think that uh, they have tried to use the Ikhwan as a method, as a means of power projection. That if we can get, you know, if we, if we because the Ikhwan is already, it, it's a very large organization, the Ikhwan. The Muslim Brotherhood is a, is a large international organization uh, all, all across the world. Uh, so you have a, a, a kind of a, a ready-made, prefabricated infrastructure of a civil society that can give you soft power in other parts of the world. Uh, and that's not something you have to build because it's already built. So if you just sponsor the, the Muslim Brotherhood uh, and have good relations with the Muslim Brotherhood, then you have an automatically, you have an already created uh, soft power infrastructure around the world. Uh, never mind that it it's also... a, a uh, incompetent. Uh, why did you support Morsi? Yo, how, who says I supported yeah. Morsi? The Muslim Brotherhood leader in Egypt in 2014. I think Sisi is a better option. If you are familiar with Shahid's past contact, yeah. you will know it's anything but... No, uh, this is why I said, if you get the Muslim Brotherhood in, in government, they will be worse than who you are, than who you are backing them to overthrow. 
they'll be worse. Morsi was, in, was completely incompetent. I believe that he was a good man, personally. As, you know, of course, I have, no, I have no knowledge of him personally, but my impression is that, that uh, privately, as an individual, he was a good man, and may Allah have mercy on him and forgive him. But he's not a politician. He's not a, he's not a leader. I mean, the Ikhwan and the people who backed the Ikhwan forget that it was under Morsi that, they, that, 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 that Egypt was, was filling the tunnels that, between Rafah and Gaza that it was under Morsi that they were filling those with sewage, the Gaza tunnels, that they were pouring sewage into those tunnels. That was Morsi. That was your guy. That's your Muslim Brotherhood president, your religious president who you, who you get happy because you see pictures of him praying uh, in, the, in, the, in the presidential palace. You just see a picture of him leading Salah and you think, oh, this is wonderful. We have Finally, we have a righteous president who, meanwhile, is filling the, the tunnels the Gaza tunnels with, with sewage water uh, and who was in negotiations after saying he never would do that. He said he would never uh, open negotiations with the IMF, which is the first thing he did when he got into office was to open negotiations with the IMF. And he, and he said that he would do everything that they asked. He, in principle, he agreed to everything that the IMF wanted from him, but he just asked for more time to be able to implement those things because situations in, in, in Egypt was already unstable and the people were already hot uh, and ready to revolt. And if I do all of these uh, terrible austerity measures and impose it on the people and, and remove the subsidies and so forth, they're going to rise up against me. I, I Just give me time, boss, and I'll do it. That's what he said. Uh, and the IMF said, well, we don't have to wait. We have an option. We've got CC. We've got the military. We can just take it over anyway, and and they and they have the power to implement it, and no one can can kick them out. And that's what happened. So they just went with Sisi. He imposed all of the IMF reforms uh, ruthlessly uh, and suppressed any resistance to those things, uh, and that was it. So no, the, the the Muslim Brotherhood. No, I didn't. I wasn't a supporter of Morsi. I was a supporter of the fact that he was the one that they elected. And you shouldn't overthrow the one that gets elected. There's a partnership, actually, if you really look at it. There's a partnership between the Zionists and the Muslim Brotherhood. There's a partnership, de facto, not official. And I, I will give the benefit of the doubt. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes the husn al means that you just have to believe people are stupid. Sometimes husn al is to believe in stupidity. Because... Uh, Again, the Ikhwan are incompetent, by and large. They're incompetent. And I have to believe that uh, all of these, because generally speaking, they are, ikh, either they are Ikhwan, they are Brotherhood, Muslim Brotherhood, or they're <coughs> uh, influenced by and aligned to Muslim Brotherhood, like again, Sami Hamdi and these types. And most of the English language, uh, most of the, uh, many of the institutions, Muslim or so-called Islamic institutions and, and, and so forth, and um, you know, media uh, organizations and uh, think tanks and whatnot, all of these types of things uh, are backed by the Ikhwan, uh, are either founded by or created by the Ikhwan and so forth, influenced by uh, the Ikhwan in the West. The, the Muslim Brotherhood in the West uh, has a massive presence with regards to any, any and all like Muslim organizations. Because they're good at that. They're very good at, at starting organizations. That's the thing that they're good at. Uh, but these are the lies. And so I have to believe that, the, the, as far as I can go with Hosn al-Dhan, is that you actually mean well, but you're just too stupid for politics. You know, I have, that's, the, that's the most Hosn al-Dhan that I can give you. Otherwise, I, Otherwise, I have to believe that you are knowingly uh, an asset and an agent for the Zionists, spreading lies, spreading lies against the Muslims and trying to create discord and fitna among the Muslims. Because actually, again, the only thing you're really interested in is overthrowing the governments, uh, our governments in our part of the world and creating fitna. And maybe you're too stupid to know that if you succeed, you'll do nothing. That This is a, col a, a colonial project. What you're supporting, the Ikhwan, is a colonial project to overthrow the Muslim governments and put yourselves in there, put the Muslim Brotherhood in there, which is putting incompetent people in there, which means that you're just putting the IMF in there. You're just handing over your governments to the IMF. 
you're handing your governments over to the West. If you if you if you put the Muslim Brotherhood in charge, you're handing your governments over to the West. I'm sorry, this is the complete opposite of what people think, but this is the reality. The way people think is that the Muslim Brotherhood stands against the West and therefore Islam and blah blah blah. That's absolutely not the case. It's absolutely not the case. They are they are a a a, a colonialist project. I hate to tell you that. I hate to break it to you because I hate for it to be true. Asking a question. Uh, okay, what do you think of the wisdom of what Hamas did in October 7? I think it was stupid. I'm not going to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, it, it, this is not something, this is not a time or a place to criticize. Yeah, we've already addressed that. Yeah, you, yeah. you don't don't say a word against them. But what, the, the threat that, that, first of all, the, the, the threat that Gaza is facing, the threat that the Palestinians are facing, and the threat the, that the Muslims globally are facing, is too serious that you shouldn't be able to have a word of, of, of criticism. I, I'll criticize the ones who are trying to create fitna between Muslims. That's the only ones I'll criticize. Otherwise, I'm not going to say a word against a Muslim. And you shouldn't either.